Hello and welcome to Doki's How to Unlock Everything in Taj Mahal, or Tales of Maj Eyal, Taj Mahal. I have unlocked the Paradox Mage, and I have unlocked the Eek in this run through, and we're just about reaching. Well, I don't particularly like Temporal Wardens too much, but there's no point really in killing ourselves. When we might be able to make it through Dreadfell. And if we can do that. And of course you do. Problem is, these guys don't give any XP, and they just keep popping up, so we gotta walk through here and get to the exit. As I was saying. If we can beat the master, we can unlock... Didn't I already do the weird pedestals here? I thought I did the weird pedestals. I remember doing the weird pedestals. I think that's a bug. We can do them again later. Um, we don't want to do the damn cave. Lake of Durer. Somewhere in my corpse light. No problem going over water. We can just explore this place thoroughly. Now that there's anything here. It's fun to watch me explore the whole zone. Um, <coughs> I left a quiver, some, a tier 5 quiver, some time ago in the vault, item vault in the Shared Tool Fortress, so we're going to go open the Shared Tool Fortress and see if it's still there. Um, that was from a different, you know, before I started this playthrough. If it is, it could help. That's the point of the fortress, after all, passing on some powerful items. That's assuming I can meet the prereqs. If you let us. You can do try that for the Share Tool Fortress around level 16. You've got two demon-filled areas. This is one of the few places where I do not recommend you completely empty the zone. The first one isn't so bad, although it's underwater, of course. But the... Next, the second level, if it's not underwater, can have some seriously nasty monsters in it. They'll be your level, but the monsters themselves are really nasty. So the question is always, do I want to continue? Let's see what's here. Alright. Well, that's actually some nastiness. So, since it's all water, we're going to clear everything out. The, the, the monsters are easier in a water level. When the, next, the first level is always, this level is always water-based. But when the next level is water-based, the monsters are easier to deal with. Still pretty nasty demon stuff, but easier. What are you? Um, well, his armor's corroded, whatever he is. Should be careful. We are stunned. Let's get rid of that. Oh, that was simple. Stoke Piercer. Oh, the dragon, light radius plus one. We don't really need more movement speed. Pinning traps everywhere are less of a problem when you don't have to breathe. 
Well, I got a forge quiver of ash arrows of accuracy. Plus four damage, minus three capacity. No corrode armor or air burst, but air burst can be annoying. It'll cripple the target. It's too mined, minus eight fire on crit. About even in damage. I'll keep what I got. On to the next level. What do we got? We got a boiling horror, some uh, unique swarming horror, some squids, neil, oriole, more boiling horror. Yeah, I, I could have predicted that. And of course, I get blinded. I want to do Let's not die. Boy, horrors are kind of evil. Let's see if I can clear this. Yes, he's dead. I'm out. Make sure I got everything I need. Airburst was not appreciated. Nope, no good. The unique is a corruptor. I think I killed the squid, which hopefully ends the blinding. Where's with a square? I think I'm on fire. Alright. Didn't end the blinding. Healed himself, crud. Okay, he's dead. We're out of here. And we're healing up and refreshing everything. All right. Let's get some spit going. Throw a shield. Oh, he's dead, thanks to our buddy down there. Now the buddy's dead too. I leave. Heal up. And let's get out of this flame. Melesis. Uh, 
I like it. Also, at least the demons leave air when they die. What am I looking at? I'm looking at a unique entrenched horror. Chana Fortitude. He's gonna heal himself. And he's finally dead. That's a tanky kind of monster, mostly because he can't move. So adding in what looks like a Sun Paladin or Anorecto level is not going to make it for happier. Alright. I triggered a trap, that's why I stopped. Swarm Hive. These are the um, honey trees of the underwater. Why am I dazed? Why am I being dazed? I'm mad they create these swarms. Unique electric eel. I could get nasty quick. Especially when it seems like it's a brawler. Alright. Well, that's no good. Was the exact opposite of what I wanted to do. All 
All right, now I have to kill one creature, and we can move in. Unfortunately, the creature's got some nasty effects. He can take off sustains, which is evil enough. Well, lots of magic on that hat. We'll save that for level up. But he's also got... Ugh, he's annoying. Yilkger. He's the weirdling beast. Fortunately, our many different types of damage knocked off his bone shield quick. Pin him down. Just keep wailing on him. I already knocked out quite a few of our sustains. Fortunately, our sustains aren't that vital to dealing damage. For some classes, it's just absolutely deadly. But for us, it was just an inconvenience. Alright. Let's go check out the vault. See if my item is still here. Void Quiver. Also the Hydrospite Molten Skin, but those aren't for this class. I don't think. Physical Clear Chance, I don't want to change a stat. Ooh! You know what? No, it's not technically for this, but that's not bad. I like the bonus light and fire damage on range. Error while transmitting. All right. It might, like I said, earlier versions can cause problems. Alright, so yeah, earlier version died. Let's try the Void Quiver. Ah, that worked. So the Molten Skin is... Okay, can we delete it? Uh, I'll have to start and I'll have to do something about that slot. But Void Quiver got it out, so let's see what that is. Void Quiver. Well, for one thing, it's quite a bit more base damage. Tier 5. Damage type is Temporal Darkness, which means it's both Temporal and Darkness. Use stats, strength, dexterity, and magic. Nice accuracy bonus, lots of armor penetration. This weapon hits Quantum Spike, 10% chance level 1. Temporal Clone, 5% chance level 1. It's got zero capacity, which means infinite capacity. Alright. He attunes the chest, and I can start getting... Alright, let me get rid of this Quiver of Ash Arrows. Now we have the Tier 5 Void Quiver, <clears throat> which is pretty much designed for Temporal Wardens. We can now start transmuting these, transmogrifying these gems, and getting energy for it, as well as the gold. And of course that lets him and tells him. And he spends some energy updating my route of recall so it brings me here. Which is all I need at the moment. We can do more later. Alright, so I have my shiny new Void Quiver, doing Temporal Darkness damage. Probably shouldn't have gotten rid of the old Quiver because I think I'm about to go to the Temporal Rift. Oh, we can save that for later once we have a different Quiver. 
I don't know what there is temporal resistance or not. In fact, we'll do it later. We need another rune slot, inscription slot, before we can really use the rune of the rift, and it's a lot less useful for this version of Temporal Warden than if it is for the Maisie type, because we don't need the paradox reduction. We barely use any uh, paradox gaining spells. I mean, it won't reduce sustain, so it doesn't help us. So level 20 will start picking up some paradox spells. I'm interested, I also want to see if the clone clones me, temporal clone, which would be great, or if the clone clones the enemy, which would be a 1 in 20 chance to clone your enemy when you shoot them would seem insane. There's a 1 in 20 chance to clone yourself when you shoot an enemy. Also kind of insane. Now, speaking of which... Another head of alchemists. Patch of Pharaoh's Ash. This for the fiery version. You might get it here. I think we could do that. This is moved here. Uh, what I meant. This may be the first cold version I've done all the way through with Daikara, so I'll show you the first time the cold version boss. Although it's exactly like the Daikara or the Temporal Rift boss. So it's just a lot more cold and a lot less temporal. Out of this um, goop.
There's the boss. How you doing, boss? Reason me solid, huh? Don't like that much. Just do not give up on that, do you? Level up. Hmm. I had not the point there. We really want to get to the end of that tree. Sword breaker, nice little dagger shield thing. Pump one more point in this so it does more than 100% damage. And. Sure, it's free. I don't mind becoming invisible. You get him so weak invisibility. Oh, there seem to be some monsters are coming. Oh, that's unpleasant. Turn me invisible, though. And this invisibility doesn't seem to harm my um damage to undone any. That's good. Hmm. Herb, the Snow Giant Champion. It's actually a unique that you often see up here.
I don't care for being stunned, sir. Level 20. Cornomancy time travel. And the only reason to take Cornomancy time travel is so you can take Echoes from the Past, which is a magic requirement. Right, of course it does. So we start boosting quantum feed and putting on our magic gear. I don't want to spend any points on magic, not yet. Don't mind spending a few more points on willpower. Alright. Now, it's got plus three magic. That's actually worth keeping on, I think. I'm sure I'm not doing it. And that's plus three magic, so these can die, and it's plus three strength, so these can die. And that's plus six magic, which is a lot of magic. It takes me up to 33, which should be enough to get echoes from the past. Up a couple of ranks. Powerful one, this. So, still though, do you want one there? Right. All right. And of course, I need my bow back on. I should probably put my And yeah, we got a few more magic boosters too, so I should be okay for leveling purposes. Quite a while. Echoes from the Past is a fascinating little Is Turning Invisible turn off your Turn Invisible Sustain? You don't realize that. Because from the past does more damage based on the amount of damage the enemy has already taken. And of course it has a much wider radius as you put more points into it. Which makes it very much worth it even for a ar pure archer.
Now I am going to consider a lesson learned and not actually open the big vault here. Probably because I don't have a teleportation room going on. That'll open the smaller vaults. They're worth it. Oh, wow. Infinite capacity quiver. It's very nice. So we're doing a lot of temporal and dark resistances. Not going to take much damage. Hmm. This is going to sing. Not oh, worth a shot anyway. We're reaching the end of this video. I'll try cleaning up here, then next time it'll be Dreadfell. Or we'll try to unlock the... On short order, the... One of the Undead Races. Randomly. And the Anortho class. Shortly thereafter. Well, I got Reknor first, but...
Ooh, as for Link to Darkness. For some reason, they always travel in packs. Actually, this video is just about done, so we don't have these little bolts. There's nothing in there we're going to need anyway, I can tell I'm looking. When we come back to Daikara, we will open all this stuff. But, this video is over, and so... Time for me to be moving right down on to Dreadfell, which we'll pick up next time. So, hope you had as good a time as I did, and I'll see you then. Well, I suppose we walk to Dreadfell. Actually, no. I don't think I've done the hidden tunnels yet, so those could pop up, and that would just be... No. Oh, does Daikara disappear? Seems to indicate it did. Hmm. See you next time.